This is Volumes of Fear, and we're back. Let's do it! Why isn't this playing? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I gotta plug it in. There we go. Presented by Crimson Knight Productions, this is Volumes of Fear, a horror comedy narrative podcast. And here is your host, and raconteur, Piedmont Montgomery. Well, well, well. Look who has come back for more volumes of fear. We knew you would return, and we are absolutely paralyzed with joy. I'm Piedmont Montgomery, your host and narrator for this broadcast of terror. Tonight's tale is all about a mysterious phantom haunting the aisles and patrons of the East Ridge Public Library. Without further ado, listeners, sit back, listen carefully, and enjoy Phantom of the Book Depository. It was a normal Wednesday afternoon at the East Ridge Public Library. Patrons were coming and going, checking out books and making good use of the library and its resources. Closing hours would soon descend upon the library, and Paige Booker was busy processing a large pile of books for return to circulation. This process could be tedious and rather monotonous, but Paige liked the consistency. She was nearly done with the processing when an upset patron named Enoch von Princeton approached her. Excuse me, little lady. Yes? I had a query pertaining to an electronic mail correspondence that I received from your institution the other day. You mean an email? I do, in fact, mean an email. Did my phrasing confuse you? No, it's just that in contemporary times, we call them emails. My, you are quite the firecracker, aren't you? You'd make a fine mistress for any well-to-do man. I'm not sure even what to say to that. What's the issue? It seems that I was sent a message alerting me that I had a late fee for a book I recently returned. Well, the library sends out electronic mail correspondence when a book is late. It just tells you the book is overdue and what the late fee is for each day it's overdue. Yes, all of that I understand. A man of my education and bravado can easily comprehend that. But I entered a state of perplexity as I know I returned the book on time. I see. Let me look it up in the system. What's your name? My name is Enoch von Princeton of the von Princeton family. Right. Let's see here. Okay, Mr. Van Prancer. Actually, it's von Princeton. Oh, sorry. Okay, it looks like the book was due back on the 16th of this month, but was returned on the 22nd. Your fine is 75 cents. This is where the discrepancy originated. I know I returned the book on the 14th, some two days before the 16th. I believe your system has erred. Well, um, Mr. Van Prater... It's Von Princeton. See, if it's in the system like this, the fine stands. This is certainly an incongruity of scandalous proportions. I can feel the frustration beneath my skin beginning to fester. I could get my manager, and you could maybe file a complaint with him. As Enoch began to get agitated, Paige's co-worker, Dewey, approached them. Hi, Paige. Is there an issue? This gentleman got an electronic mail correspondence about a late fee. A what? An email. He got an email telling him he didn't return a book on time, and now he has a late fee. But he's saying he returned the book on time. Am I to assume that you're a superior of this young lady's? In a figurative sense, I am. No, you're not. Paige, in many ways, I'm a mentor to you, which makes me superior. But we've got an issue here that needs to be addressed. I think I need to speak with an authoritative administrator about this scenario. Well, Mr... Von Princeton. Enoch Von Princeton. Well, Mr. Von Printon... I'll check the system, and we'll see what that says. I already did that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm really out of ideas beyond that. Maybe I should get the head librarian, Mr. Stax. Actually, Paige, 
I think we can take care of this ourselves. We can? Yeah, it's real easy. Mr. Von Pringles? Yes? Fork over the 75 Abes. Pardon me? Your book is late. You do the crime, you pay the fine. We don't mess around here at the East Ridge Public Library. My word. This is insulting on so many levels. I shan't tolerate this. Dewey, stop. Look, Mr. Von Princeton. Finally. There must be some sort of mix-up. I'm going to amend the entry in our system and change it to say you returned the book on time. That will cancel out the fine. I'm sure there is some logical explanation for all of this. Well, I certainly started this vocal exchange with a certain mood of bafflement. And then this young lummox insulted me and I should desire satisfaction. However, your efforts to resolve this conflict have proved satiating. I shall say thank you to you, little lady, and I will now depart. Good day to you. Have a good one. Indeed. I can't believe you're letting that weasel get away with this. Look, that guy was annoying and talked like a fancy lad, but this is the fourth complaint I've gotten this week from people who were told they had late fees, but insisted they returned their books on time. Roberta was telling me she's also gotten several complaints about late fees that make no sense. Something is obviously wrong with our system. Or maybe it's something else. What is that supposed to mean? A year ago, something like this happened. About a dozen patrons made complaints in regard to what they felt were unjust late fees. They all insisted they'd return their books on time, and even Roberta told me that this happens every year at the same time. The librarians all believed that something menacing was behind these occurrences. Something menacing? Roberta and the other busybodies all said it was the Phantom. You mean to tell me that every year several patrons said they returned their books on time and got hit with late fees? And it was because of a phantom? Yes, the phantom of the book depository. Wow, Dewey, that has to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Paige, this is too much to be a coincidence. Dewey, do you hear yourself? This is absurd. That's right, Paige. It is absurd. Both Paige and Dewey were startled as they turned around to find Mr. Stax, the head librarian, standing behind them. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stax. I didn't see you there. That's okay, Paige. I prefer to go unnoticed when I'm monitoring conversations in the library. What was going on with Mr. Von Princeton? You know him? Enoch Von Princeton frequents this library often, and his family has been on the board of trustees for a number of years. The Von Princetons are very influential. I need to be briefed on what was happening. He said he got a notice about a book of his being overdue. He insisted that he returned it on time, but the computer said it was late. I could see that things were getting testy, for lack of a better word. So I just erased the late fee. I hope that's okay. Very wise, Paige. We don't want to make anyone in the Von Princeton family unhappy. I think your little friend Dewey could take a lesson from you. But if any other patrons complain of late fees, you are to uphold the fee, no matter what. Yes, sir. Now, Dewey, I believe Roberta gave you a special project earlier today. She did, sir. She told me to build a book house near the self-help section. Do you remember the one she built last fall? Yes, sir. Ten feet wide, ten feet long, six feet high. She has photos you can use for reference. And the whole thing is made of books stacked on top of each other? Yes, just use the books from the history section. Based on today's culture, no one reads those anyway. And the roof? I don't know, Dewey. Refer to Roberta's photos. Sir, if you don't mind me asking, could this end up being a little dangerous? What if this book house fell over onto someone? It could really hurt them. If the book house falls onto someone, then they probably deserved it. Get it done by tomorrow. By tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Now get to it. <sighs> yes, sir. Paige, you're scheduled to close the library tonight. This is your first time closing up. Are you comfortable with this? Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you, Paige. I knew I could count on you. The building closing procedures are on Roberta's desk. And don't forget to put out the display signs for tomorrow's book club meeting. Mr. Stax departed, and both Paige and Dewey went back to their respective tasks. Several hours passed, and it was time for Paige to close up the library. Paige looked forward to the task 
as well as the responsibility and trust placed in her. Paige, I'm leaving now. Do you need anything before I go? No thanks, Roberta. I've got the list of closing procedures, but I don't remember seeing Mr. Stax leave for the day. Oh, he quietly slinks out of here, like a nerd at prom. Interesting. Hey, do me a favor, will ya? I got a call earlier from one of our patrons. He got one of those notices saying that his book was overdue, and he's sure that he returned the book on time. I checked, but the return isn't showing up in our system. Can you just keep an eye out for a copy of Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky? Someone actually checked that book out? Yeah, I know what you mean. But to each their own. If you need anything, just call my cell phone. Thanks, Roberta. Have a great night. I plan to. My hubby's taking me to Beefy's Roast Beef for a beefy sandwich tonight. (laughs) All right, have fun. It's gonna be lit. I bet. Roberta then departed and Paige went about making sure the library was secure and ready to be locked up. She made sure all the guests were gone as she turned off the lights and locked the doors. There. That should be everything. Let me just double-check the closing procedures document to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, rats. I forgot to put out that stupid display sign for the book club meeting tomorrow. Realizing the error she made, Paige went back into the library and quickly put the display signs out for the following day's book club meeting. There we go. Now that should be everything. Paige was ready to depart once more, when suddenly she heard a sound. What was that? She looked around to see where the noise had come from. She moved behind the checkout counter and looked inquisitively. There she found a book on the floor. What is this? Paige moved closer to inspect the book on the floor and was taken aback when she saw the title. Crime and Punishment? But Roberta said this book hadn't been returned yet, at least according to our records. Paige was certainly confused. The book was indeed the same one Roberta had said hadn't been returned yet, at least according to the library system. She set the book on the counter and planned to address the confusion the next day, when unexpectedly... She heard more noises, similar to what she had just heard. Paige looked and discovered more books on the floor. She looked at the small collection curiously. More books? That's weird. I wonder if these are all overdue as well. Then suddenly, Paige heard the sounds of someone scurrying away. Hello? Is someone there? Starting to feel a little creeped out. Paige's imagination began to run wild. Maybe it's the Phantom. No, it can't be. That was just a stupid story. Yet, as Paige was just about to rid her mind of such nonsense, she saw a dark and shadowy figure standing in one of the aisles. Uh, who are you? The library is closed. I am the ominous force who creates late fees, for I am the Phantom of the Book Depository. What is the meaning of this? Who are you? My dear girl, leave this depository now. Paige stood and watched as the phantom began to run toward her. As the mystery man got closer to her, she was able to see that he wore a cape and a white mask that concealed his face. While not necessarily terrified by the corny disguise, Paige was alarmed at the idea of someone sick enough to wear such a disguise and hide in a library after hours. She knew her tormentor was probably not mentally sound, so she began to run. To elude the degenerate chasing her, Paige ran into the young adult section. Just when she thought she was safe, the phantom appeared. You are disrupting my mission. Paige's concerns began to grow, and she quickly darted off once more. She ran through the children's section, the mystery section, the romance section, and the biographical section. Yet no matter where she ran to, the phantom was just a step behind her. She moved as quickly as she could until finally she rounded a corner and ran right into her co-worker, Dewey. Ow, Paige! What are you doing? Dewey! The phantom! He's real! He's chasing me! Paige, what are you talking about? The phantom isn't real! It's just the story a bunch of the old bags of work here made up to cover for the fact that they don't know what they're doing when it comes to processing returns. No. Dewey, he's real. Wait a minute. What are you doing here? I was working on that stupid book house for Mr. Stax. I sat down to take a break and I fell asleep. That book house's main living room is actually sort of cozy. You what? 
You fell asleep? Yeah. Literally building a house out of books is not exactly exciting. What are you doing here? Mr. Stax asked me to close the library. I forgot something and came back in. I found a book that one of the visitors said he returned, but came up in the system as being overdue. Dewey, I think the Phantom has been stealing books and returning them late to cause late fees. Do you hear yourself? That is pretty stupid, Paige. I know what it sounds like, and I'm sure there's an explanation behind all of this, but it doesn't change the fact that there is a guy in here chasing me. This is nuts. I'm going home. And just as Dewey finished saying this, he turned around to see the Phantom standing behind him. Who are you? I am the Phantom of the Book Depository. He's real! The Phantom's real! Oh, he's real! He's real! He's real! The Phantom's real! Oh, he's real! And like a cat, startled by a cucumber, Dewey pranced away as fast as he could. Dewey? You twerp! He is gone now, and you should be as well. Okay, okay, I'll go. But out of curiosity, have you been taking returned books and hiding them in order to cause late fees for our patrons? Ha <laughs> ha! You truly are very wise, Paige. How did you know my name? I know all! I am the Phantom! It didn't take Paige long to figure out who the Phantom was. He knew her name, and he paid her a compliment that she had heard earlier in the day. And, frankly, his voice gave away his identity. Mr. Stax? What? No! I'm not the head librarian, Mr. Stax. Yes, you are. You knew my name. Earlier, you said I was wise, and even without those hints, I can tell by your voice. Alas, you have figured out my identity. Why are you dressed up like this? And why are you causing late fees? Because, Paige, many years ago, I was a patron at this same library. I went to check out a book. And I was told I owed a late fee, but I knew I had returned the book on time and that the error was on the librarian's mistake. I was given the choice of paying the fine or never returning. Out of frustration, I decided to pay the fine with the only money I had. It was 35 cents, but that 35 cents was part of my bus fare. Therefore, I was unable to ride the bus home was forced to walk. The commute took me so long that by the time I got home, someone very close to me was dead. Had I been home, I could have saved their life. Oh, Mr. Stax, I never knew. I'm so sorry. Who died? My gerbil, Leonard. What? Seriously? Yes, Paige. Leonard went into cardiac arrest while I was walking home. I was not there. I could have performed CPR on him. It could have saved his life. So your gerbil died due to cardiac arrest. But had you been home, you could have somehow given his tiny body CPR. Yet you couldn't get home on time to do this because you couldn't take the bus. And that was because you were short on change to pay the bus fare because you used that money to pay a late fee at this library. Yeah, that's accurate. Very convoluted, I know, but... If I didn't have to pay the late fee, Leonard would still be alive. You were close to your gerbil? He was my best and only friend. So, as revenge, you dress in a cape and a stupid mask and stay late at your job to hide books and cause people late fees? I cause late fees around the anniversary of Leonard's death so that all may know the same frustration that I did. But you're the head librarian. Why the costume? Why not just stay late and cause the late fees then? Or, if you're discreet enough, you could even cause the late fees during the day. Enough questions! I am the Phantom! I think you might need professional help. But, as Paige gave the Phantom unsolicited advice, he began to move toward her in a menacing manner. Mr. Stax, what are you doing? You know my secret, Paige. I cannot let you leave. You need to stay back, Mr. Stax. I'm warning you. Oh? And what, pray tell, will you do about it? Having had enough of the pity party, and realizing that definitive action needed to be taken, Paige grabbed a book off of a nearby shelf. What do you have there? It's a collection of works by Victor Hugo. Oh, I love Les Mis. Yeah, we'll try to Les Mis this. With fiery intensity, Paige then threw the book at the Phantom with all of her might. 
Ow! Hey! That hurt! Realizing that the flying hardcover stopped the Phantom's advancement, Paige quickly grabbed another book. How about some Jane Austen for you? Maybe a little pride and prejudice? And pain? Ah! Quit it! Watch what I can do with a flick of the wrist and some Oliver Twist. How dare you! Oh look, Catcher in the Rye. Perfect for a shot to the eye. Ow! Oh! The Phantom spun around in pain. Paige's literary assault had done its damage. The Phantom was disoriented and stumbled right into the wall of the bookhouse that Dewey had spent all day building. The wall of the bookhouse gave way, and it collapsed on the Phantom, burying him in books. Paige! Over here, guys! Paige was happy to hear Dewey's voice, but she was more relieved to see he had telephoned the police, and they were with him. Arrest that man! Oh, Paige, I was so worried when we got separated. Separated? Yes, that crazy phantom used some kind of mind control to trick me into fleeing the library. You ran out of here screeching like a little kid that saw a bug. Paige, the details aren't important. Everything is safe now. The Dew Man arrived and called the cops and led them here to save you. Actually, it looks like this little bookhouse fell on him. Crushed him good. Well, I purposely built that bookhouse to be very faulty. The police officers moved some of the books off of the Phantom and placed him in restraints. You're under arrest, pal. Let's get this stupid mask off him. Oh my goodness! Paige! The Phantom is Mr. Stax! No! I'm the Phantom! And no one can stop me! Actually, it looks like this gal stopped you. Oh. Yeah. You're right. Come on, creep, you're done. Maybe being institutionalized for the rest of your life will teach you a lesson. Book em, fellas. <laughs> Good one. That was actually very clever. Hm, <laughs> I taught her that. And so the police took Mr. Stax away. Paige and Dewey simply stood and watched as the mystery of the Phantom and all the late fees were solved. What a tale of terror indeed. The Phantom certainly played upon the fears of modern society. Everyone fears late fees. Isn't that right, Winston? It sure is, Mr. Piedmont! Winston, if you could describe this edition of Volumes of Fear with just one word, what would that word be? Phantomastic! I'm not sure I understand that in the slightest. Well, see... It's a combination of the word phantom, which comes from the title of tonight's episode, and the word fantastic, which is what I say every day when I wake up. Oh, thanks for the clarification. You sound like a learned man, rather well-read. You bet! Well, I suppose we should close the book on this edition of Volumes of Fear. We want to thank you, our valued listener, for tuning in and reveling in the terror. We would like to thank our presenter, Crimson Knight Productions, for all of their help in the production efforts required to create these macabre tales. Until next time, listeners, this has been Volumes of Fear. Find us on the social media outlets, and don't forget to share the scare and like the lunacy. This episode of Volumes of Fear featured the acting talents of Shannon Riley, Josh Berkey, Swirl, Andy Collins, Rachel Collins, and J.C. Rositas. It was produced by Andy Collins and J.C. Rositas from a script by Andy Collins. Sound mixing and engineering was done by J.C. Rositas with artwork by Derek DeBoer. Musical tracks by Kevin McCloyd of Incompetech.com were used as a part of this episode's score. This episode of Volumes of Fear was presented by Crimson Knight Productions. Visit them online at cnproductions.net. Follow Volumes of Fear on Facebook or suffer the horrible consequences.